Um, Chris Hadfield, though, let's let's go to the asteroid that could hit the Earth. Chris Hadfield is a colonel astronaut who's now retired. He's also an author. And he's coming to the UK for a tour, Chris. Um, and your, I think the tour is called A Journey into the Cosmos. Yeah, it's uh, thanks. It's good to be speaking with you. I'll be there in June, a bunch of cities across the UK and over to Dublin for a couple talks as well. Looking forward to it very much. There's so much stuff going on uh, on Earth, uh, orbiting the Earth and to the moon and beyond. Uh, millions of things to talk about. But one of the things we should talk about today, I think, is uh, is this asteroid. Does it have a name yet? Well, it was discovered on Christmas Day, and it's going to be back in 2028, just before Christmas. And if it does smuck into the Earth, it's going to be in 2032, just before Christmas. So I'm calling it the Christmas asteroid. It's incredible that scientists, astronomers, can de- can determine to such precise date even probably time when it's going to hit so how first of all chris how do they know uh with a bunch of telescopes uh, most of the telescopes are on earth in fact most asteroids are discovered by amateurs people with their own telescopes who just love looking into the darkness and trying to find a star that's where star shouldn't be, or one that's moving against the star field. Um, but this one is very faint. Uh, it has never been seen before uh, this Christmas, just right on Christmas Day of 2024. But now all kinds of uh, telescopes are trained on it because it's going to come quite close to Earth in 2028. And then potentially, very small probability, like one in 45 chance of hitting the Earth uh just before Christmas at 2.30 in the afternoon on, uh, uh, I think it's the 20, what, the 22nd of, of December in uh, 2032. So um, because it has a probability of hitting us and doing damage, uh, we're really having a good look. So the probability has jumped from 1.2% in January to 2.3% in February. Um, tell us about the consistency of the asteroid and how that will affect the impact it has on Earth if and when it hits. Sure, it's hard to figure out what those numbers even feel like, right? But it's like right now it's about one in 45 chance of of hitting us that day. So, you know, 44 chances out of 45, it, it wouldn't hit us. But one in 45, that's definitely not zero. The, the reason we don't know for sure it's sort of like um, if you play billiards or, or shuffleboard, the moment you release the, the shuffleboard uh, weight or, or you hit the pool ball, um, you're pretty sure where it's going to go. But but it's not 100 percent sure. And, and there's some variability and and you've got to watch it for a while to figure out where it's going to hit. And we have a lot of good telescopes looking at it. But what's really going to answer it is the big, powerful James Webb telescope is scheduled to have a good look for it uh, next month and in early April. And that will really help us refine exactly where it is going to uh, be on that day in 2032, whether it'll intersect the orbit of the world or whether it'll give us a near miss. So according to this piece, it's what? It's it's less than 100 meters wide, which is maximum 300 feet wide. And if it breaks, what's worse for us here on Earth if we manage to strike unlucky and it does hit us? What's worse if it breaks into smaller pieces before it enters Earth atmosphere or it hits us in one piece? Yeah, that's that's a hard thing to say because it kind of depends where it's hitting. And we don't really even know how it's made. Um, it may be one solid rock from some old bit of a broken up planet, like one big boulder that's whatever, 60 meters across, big lump of rock. Or it might just be an agglomeration of, of millions and millions of stones and lumps and boulders. Um, it's We think, because of the way it reflects light, that it's probably a stony asteroid, a, a bunch of bits of other things that have slowly coalesced together. Um, so it, it probably won't break up. It'll sort of burn up coming through the atmosphere. But if you go to Phoenix, Arizona, in, in northern Arizona, right by the Grand Canyon, there's a huge hole in the ground, more than a thousand meters across. And that 
was from an asteroid about the same size as this one. It hit the Earth 50,000 years ago. And if you go up into Siberia, uh, up in the Tunguska area, uh, we got hit by a meteorite like this about 120 years ago, and it flattened the forest for like, I don't know, a thousand kilometers because it was an airburst. And so whether explain it broke how, it, sorry to interrupt, but explain yeah. how something that's less than 100 meters wide can impact a thousand square meters, sorry, a thousand square miles of, ah. of the Earth's surface. Well, be because it has 7.7 uh, .7 megatons worth of, of TNT, it's about 500 times more powerful than the biggest bomb we exploded during World War II. 500 times more powerful. So think of the destruction we wrought on each other in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, this is 500 times more powerful than that, just because of the energy of it coming through the atmosphere, causing shock waves, and because of the heating exploding. So uh, it, it's like a grenade. A grenade is no bigger than your fist, but it can do damage over a wide area. This is a grenade that's uh, 60 meters across. Wow. But with none of the radiation associated with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, though. Correct. It's just a rock, it's a rock. Uh, or, or a collection of stones. But a collection of stones and rock going 17 kilometers a second. Wow. You know, just think how fast that is. The space station's only going eight kilometers a second. You know, I lived up there for half a year. It's going twice as fast as the space station, like a bullet zeroing in on Earth from deep space. Um, the odds are it's going to miss us. And by springtime, we'll know even better. The best part is, and I'm sure you want to ask me about it, Catherine, is we have plans if we know for sure. or, yes. or we think that tell us, tell us what the plans are. Right. Well, back in 2001, 2002, or 2021, 2022, we were thinking about this, NASA and uh, other agencies. And so we actually launched a probe to go hit an asteroid and see if we could deflect one. Or not, sort of like the precept for the movie Armageddon, although that movie was terrible. But could we do it or not? And we actually found in 2021, we launched a probe. And in 2022, we were, were so good at it that we crashed into this asteroid and we could measure it afterwards. What did it do? To, and it deflected it. And if, it's almost like a how, pool ball. How do you do that? Yeah. Oh, you just you just crash into it. But if, if you hit it early enough, you'll just you just have to change its trajectory a tiny bit. Like if someone was, a pool ball was rolling across and you just blew on the side of it, you you could make it miss at the other end. So just if you get it early enough, then a tiny angular change will, will cause it to miss the Earth. So we still have until 2032 and it's going to come back close to Earth in 2028. And we should know pretty well this spring. So if we had a, a big fear because of our best math that it was actually a threat to humanity, then uh, we would organize ourselves and do something about it. But who's going to do that? Who's going to pay for it? There'll be all sorts of politics involved. But at least we're, we know that we're capable of saving the Earth. And that's one of the pretty interesting benefits of the human space program. And we have the capacity to send up a probe or whatever it is. And so that whatever happens, an asteroid is not going to strike the Earth in 2032. Well, there'll be, there'll be lots of little asteroids. Right? The Earth gets hit by 40 tons of asteroids every day. 40 tons okay. of rock hits the world every day, right. but they're little and they burn up in the atmosphere. And they, you know, when you, when you look at the moats in a sunbeam of little bits of things, those are vaporized bits of, of asteroids mostly that have hit the Earth. So that's normal. It's rare to have a big one. Um, and that's why we have all of these earth protection um, sensors and telescopes and you know we're, we're trying to protect ourselves and um, and yeah we have we now for the first time in the history of humanity and the planet the dinosaurs didn't have one of these you know they just looked up from their vegetables and died we we have the ability to protect ourselves uh, we have to organize we have to decide it's the right thing to do someone has to spend the money but at least we have the proven ability to do something about it. And it's nice that here, seven years in advance, we've already detected this approximately 60 meter rock. And, uh, and now we're just refining our knowledge to make the right decision. And is there a chance that there is an asteroid out there that we haven't spotted, unlike the Christmas one? Oh, yeah. There, there's an, almost an unlimited number of them. Um, and <laughs> no, the trouble but heading is, towards us, I mean. Uh, well, they're the same color as space. 
and uh, often they don't reflect light very well. And, and so they're hard to see, but we, we found thousands and thousands of them. We have them all cataloged, but we keep looking, uh, trying to make sure our database is as complete as possible. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, nothing's perfect, of course, but this is a good example of how much more perfect we are now than we were even 10 years ago. Thank you very much. That was an absolutely fascinating out-of-body experience talking to you. Chris Hadfield, the Colonel Astronaut, also the author, who's coming to the UK for a tour later this year, which is called Chris Hadfield, A Journey into the Cosmos.